prosperity, and purpose. God has plans for your life to prosper you and to give you hope and a future. Join us now. It's your season. It's your time. Welcome, church family. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network, where we bring you the Lord's Word every day from some of the country's most inspiring churches and pastors. And today is no different. Let's check out one of the newest members of the Daily Gospel Network. Hey, welcome everyone to One Touch Ministry broadcast right here on the Daily Gospel Network. I am Reverend Dr. Shani E. Young. That's me. And this is my beautiful <laughs> wife, the prophetess Naditra Young slash Master Life Coach. <laughs> Greet the people, honey. Okay. Well, God bless everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I guess we have the Dr. Reverend. Something like Bishop. that. Yeah. Apostle. All of it. Just yeah. put me all in there. Oh. Okay. All the times. You're going to have that business card with everything? Yep. Oh. Okay. Everything from alphabet soup to. <laughs> yeah. Cut! <laughs> it's like, no. <laughs> but God bless everyone. Thanks again for joining us. We thank the Daily Gospel for allowing us to come on and be able to be a blessing to you and come to you in your homes at this time. Yes. And I just want to put out there that, you know, hey, my wife and I are available um, to come minister, preach, sing, whatever it is. Go to our website, the number one touch ministries.net. And there you can find information you can fill out there as well as, as you know, my wife is a master life coach. So if you need some assistance, some help, some things in your life that you need God to be able to help you with, um, definitely reach out to my wife at this time and follow our Facebook page as well for Win Academy and just type in Win Academy and you'll find us there. Yes. Amen. And the number for Win Academy is the one eight four four you win because at the end of the day we want the people to understand that they are going to win when they call Win Academy. When you're going to live better, you're going to feel better, you're going to be just all around better. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So on today, my wife is bringing you an awesome dynamic word. I can't wait for you to hear it. And so listen to this brief commercial and we'll be right back. We want to share with you yeah. and your family, family the love of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So tune in, tune in, and we will grow together to increase our faith with God with one touch in the streets. We're touching hearts and changing lives with God bless you everyone. My name is Prophetess Naditra Young and I am here to give you a word from God. I am so super excited because I know that this word is going to impact you. It's going to bless you. It's most of all going to empower you and it's going to give you that push that you need to go forward. I'm telling you, I'm so excited. And I know that God is going to turn your life around and I know God is going to heal you, set you free, and deliver you huh, from anything and everything that has had you bound. If you will turn with me to 2 Timothy, the first chapter, verse 1 to 13. And I'm going to do my best. And I'm telling you right now, because I'm super excited, I'm going to do my best to get through 1 to 13. Because I know that it's going to be a blessing to you. But in your moments of meditation and in your moments of prayer, my God from Zion, I want you to take the time and I want you to read 2 Timothy, the first chapter, all the way through so you can get a clear overview and a clear understanding exactly what God is trying to say to you. My God from Zion. Hallelujah. Once again, if you will go with me to 2 Timothy, the first chapter, and we're going to go through verse 1. Listen, 
I'm telling you. And, 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 and it was so amazing when I was looking and, and, and I was beginning to research and, and I was reading through Timothy and I was just trying to let it marinate on me. It was so and I'm telling you, it's just amazing on the story and the encouragement and, and, and the building up. I'm telling you, and I just could not believe it. And I said, God, this right here, this right here, this, this verse, this book is for me. And when I tell you, it spoke to me. It, this chapter spoke to me and it enlightened me and it made me feel that God has not left me. God has and called me. God has chosen me to do a work. And that's exactly what God is saying to you today. He has chosen you, my God from Zion. He has chosen you to do a work. Oh, glory to God. My God from Zion. I'm going to do my best to stay calm. Hallelujah. Alrighty. I'm going to go ahead on into, hallelujah, the first verse. Hallelujah. Mm-mm-mm. Woo! Glory to God. This is amazing. This is amazing. Second Timothy, the first chapter. My God. And we're talking about Paul here. Paul is the apostle. And I'm going to do my best. Like I said, I'm going to go through verse 1. And I'm just going to run right through it. Paul was the apostle. And Paul was getting ready to uh, uh, um, go away. Paul knew that this was his time to leave. It, 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 his time was up. Uh, how many of you have had your situations in your life and you know time is running out? Time is up. Paul knew because it was time for him to pack up and go. He was in prison. He was in a, a bad situation. Have you ever been in a bad situation? And you knew that your time was drawing near. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And he wanted to write a letter. He wanted to write a letter to Timothy and to give him. Timothy, some instructions. One thing I love about Jesus, he knows how to give you instructions. Hallelujah. If he has to give it to you through a dream, he'll send it through a dream. If he has to send somebody to send a word, hallelujah, to let you know that he's still on the throne. However God decides he wants to do it. But he has a way that is mighty sweet. He will send you instructions. And that's what Apostle Paul was doing in this story to Timothy. He was writing Timothy a letter because he knew his time was drawing near. He was in prison and they were getting ready to kill him. And he wanted to make sure that Timothy was well equipped. To go to the next phase. My God. Whew. Oh, I feel my help. <laughs> I feel my help coming on. All right. So, uh, uh, and, and, and verse 2. Uh, he starts his letter off to Timothy. He says, to Timothy, dearly beloved son. This is the King James Version. And also the Message Bible does the same thing. Glory to God. It says in, in the second verse, it says, Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, huh, mercy, and peace. Huh? He wanted to make sure that he understood huh, in this letter, my God from them. I know, hallelujah. Paul, he always starts his letters off with hmm, grace, my God, mercy, and peace. But this letter to Timothy was special. Because there was instructions involved. So I do believe when he said grace, mercy, and peace. He was letting him know. You're going to have trials. But God's going to give you grace. Huh? Glory to God. Hallelujah. You're going to have some ups and downs. And God's going to give you mercy. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And you're going to go through. But you're still going to have peace. Huh? In the midst of it all. Woo, glory to God. So he says. To Timothy, he says, to Timothy, my dear beloved son. He reminded him that, Timothy, you are a son to me. See, Apostle Paul was not Timothy's biological father, but he was a spiritual father to Timothy. Hallelujah. So he made sure he knew, Timothy, you are a son, someone I love. You're dear, near and dear to my heart. Huh? Glory to God. To Timothy, my dear beloved son, grace and peace 
from God the Father, Christ Jesus our Lord. Glory to God. Mm. Exciting. 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 Who glory to God. Alrighty. Moving on down to verse three uh verse three. <coughs> this right here talks about Timothy the beloved. And this is also sometimes in some Bibles, this is also called the encouragement to Timothy. Because see, Timothy needed encouragement. Let me tell you a little story about Timothy. Just a little bit of background. Just because you need to know your audience. And as a leader, as you're preaching and as you're teaching and as you're becoming a, a spiritual mother, spiritual father, mentor, whatever you are doing with people, you must know your audience. You must know how uh, uh, each person is. And I'm telling you, Apostle Paul knew Timothy. Timothy was timid. Timothy was shy. But Timothy needed to know that Jesus, hi oh my God, God has called him to the forefront to pastor, to go on and be able to take over the churches. But my God, Timothy wasn't quite sure of himself. So God needed to inform Timothy. He needed to know he had to have encouragement. So Apostle Paul, because he knew his spiritual son, which was Timothy, he knew that his son needed some encouragement. So he had to make sure that he massaged uh, the emotions of Timothy so Timothy could go forth and be the man of God that God called him to be. Woo, glory to God. Verse 4. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo. Greatly desiring to see thee. He was greatly desiring to see thee. Remember, Apostle Paul was in prison. Him and Timothy had been separated. He was greatly, uh, 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 he was greatly, 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 greatly desiring to see him. Because he knew that Timothy had love for him. He knew that Timothy uh, 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 held him close to his heart. How many of you have held someone close to your heart? And, and when you separate, huh? my God, when you, you're apart from each other, and, uh, you're longing to see one another. So sometimes you're, you, you, you ache for that person. Sometimes you cry in the middle night for that person. It's just like a loved one that you have lost. Huh? They have gone on to be with the Lord. Huh? And you say, well, I, 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 I long huh, to see them again. Huh? But I know if I live right huh, and I stay with God, I know that one day huh, I will see them again. Huh? Glory to God from Zion. So uh, he stated to him in the fourth verse, he said, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears. He was mindful of Timothy's tears. See, Timothy wasn't that timid to the point where he didn't realize that uh, Apostle Paul would not be around. So he cried to show Apostle Paul that Apostle Paul, your words of encouragement, the things that you poured uh, into me over the time and over the years, it meant something to me. So he was showing Apostle Paul, my God, we have a relationship. Woo, glory to God. I, I have taken our time together and I haven't uh, uh, made it feel like it, it, it didn't mean anything. I wanted to show you through my tears. Woo, glory to God. Uh, that you, you mean something to me. And see, at the time, Apostle Paul, because he was a leader and because he had been faced with so many things and, and because Apostle Paul had a past, my God, uh, and, and, and he did some things, and uh, he was very dangerous at one time, my God, from Zion, hallelujah, uh, Apostle Paul was facing, not only was he facing uh, 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 being persecuted in jail and, and prison, uh, but he was being persecuted by friends, uh, people left him, people that said, I will walk with you, uh, and I will talk with you, uh, and I will walk the valleys and I will stand on mountaintops with you but you know because sometimes we go through things uh, and a lot of us have a past and, and what happens is when you have a past uh, you're so 
so-called friends uh, have a tendency to want to walk away from you uh, once they hear about your past. Uh, but I am here to tell you, uh, if they walk away, uh, it's for a reason. Huh? Glory to God. If they walk away, uh, God is doing something great inside of you. Uh, God said, when I disconnect you, don't go try to reconnect something that I just disconnected. Woo! Glory to God. God wants you to understand. Huh? If they were your friends, my God, from Zion, they would have never left. Because one thing about a friend, huh? the friend to the end. Huh? But my God, Apostle Paul was facing so much. He was facing so much hurt. He was facing so much pain. And Timothy's tears, my God, brought blessings to him. Timothy's tears huh, brought comfort to him. My God, once again, we must go back up. Huh? Hallelujah. When it was talking about huh? glory to God, when he wrote the letter, when he first started writing the letter, and he said, grace, huh? Huh? mercy, and peace. Who glory to God. Because huh? he must understand. You must understand. One thing, huh, when you are a leader, huh, you're going to go through some things. Huh, but one thing I love about Jesus Christ, huh, our Lord and Savior, huh, he knows how to bring grace. Huh, he knows how to bring mercy. Huh, and he knows how to bring <laughs> peace. Glory to God. Oh, glory to God. I'm getting excited. I'm going to move on down to verse 5. Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. Apostle Paul had to remind Timothy about his lineage. He had to remind him about his generation. He had to remind him where he came from. Every now and then, God has to remind you. Listen, not only, ladies and gentlemen, should you know your spiritual DNA, but you must know your natural DNA because your natural DNA has to match up with your spiritual G DNA. Glory to God. And, and Apostle Paul was letting him know. He said, Timothy, remember... You're a man of faith. Timothy needed to know that because he needed to be encouraged because he was about to take on an assignment and an assignment that was about to carry him huh, to the next level. A lot of times when we're getting ready to take on an assignment, you need encouragement. You need somebody to pour. Oh, glory to God. You need somebody to pour that uh, oil. Uh, you need somebody to pour, my God, uh, encouraging words to you. Because when times get low, you want to be able to go back. And look at those encouraging words. And remember those encouraging words. Because they're going to push you to your next level. He had to remind him. He said, Timothy, remember, you came from faith. Ah, again, he had to remind him, you are a man of faith, and you came from faith, and the faith came from your grandmother, <coughs> and the faith came from your mother. A lot of times, we need to understand where our, 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 our faith lies. <laughs> What kind of pushed you into walking into faith? I, I, I never understood why I had the spirit of prayer on top of me. Until one day, I happened to be driving my father home from work. And we, we had just got in the car good. It had only been about three or four minutes. And my father began to pray. He wasn't praying loud. He was praying to himself. And all you could see was his lips moving. And after my father passed, the Holy Ghost reminded me. He said, the reason why you are a woman of prayer is because you came from a man. Oh, glory to God. Huh? You, you, your father was a praying man. My God. Huh? You had a father. With, you, had your, you have your father's DNA in you. Glory to God. You have your father's DNA. Huh? And I said, oh, God, are you serious? And, and I, I, it, it blew my mind knowing that I love to pray because I saw my father praying, which pushed me 
to pray even the more. So, to, uh, 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 Paul, Apostle Paul had to remind Timothy that your grandmother was a woman of prayer and faith. A woman of faith. A woman of faith. Your mother was a woman of faith. So that means you must have the same kind of faith. You have faith running through your DNA. Come on. All righty. I, 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 I hope you're getting this. Uh, who glory to God. I hope it's stirring up something inside of you. Verse 6. My God. Oh God. Mm. God began to tell Timothy. Now listen. I'm sorry, Apostle Paul began to tell Timothy, Timothy, now I want you to remember one thing. There's a gift. There's a special gift. There's a special gift inside of you. You got to remember, ladies and gentlemen, you have a special gift. God has given you a special gift. God has given you an anointing that sits inside your belly. God has given you an anointing, my God, that can shake the earth. God has given you so much power. My God, from Zion. Huh? And, and, and God wants you, huh? God wants you huh? not to be timid, intimidated huh? by other people. God does not want you huh? trying to do huh? somebody else's assignment. Huh? God doesn't want you, huh? glory to God, huh? to be looking over huh? at somebody else's paper. Who oh, glory to God, trying to get somebody else's answers to answer your questions. Who oh, glory to God. God just wants you, huh? I said, God just wants you, huh? God just wants you, huh? To be focused, huh? To have tunnel vision, huh? And He wants you, huh? To have your ears, huh? Have your, uh, 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 your ears, huh? Have them open, huh? And have your beautiful eyes, huh? Stay on Him, huh? He wants you to, to open up, huh? Oh, glory to God. He wants you to understand one thing that he has put you on this assignment. And it's up to you to complete the assignment. Woo. You have to get to the point where you're not trying to do somebody else's work. You got to get to the point where you're not interested in taking on somebody else's assignment. Because there's a gift that's lying with inside of you. There's an anointing that's inside of you. Huh? I'm going to have to stop right there and I'm going to stay right there. Huh? There, 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 there. There's something on the inside of you. Huh? God is saying, I'm trying to birth huh? something inside of you. Huh? I, 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 I'm trying to stir this thing up. Huh? But I'm going to need you to let go of some things. Huh? I'm going to need you. Huh? I'm going to need you to walk away from some people. Huh? I'm going to need you. Huh? Glory to God from Zion. Woo. I'm going to need you to say no to some things. I, 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 I'm going to need you to uh, fast more. I'm going to need you to pray more. I'm going to need you to read your word. So when people... Woo, glory to God. Let me tell you real fast. See, uh, the reason why Apostle Paul... And I'm just going to get straight to the point. One of the reasons why Apostle Paul was writing this letter to Timothy, yes, to encourage him, but he wanted him to be, be well aware that there's going to be some false prophets that are about to attack the churches. This is the real moral of the story, that he wanted Timothy to be ready. He wanted Timothy to stay true to it all. He wanted Timothy, my God from Zion, he wanted Timothy to understand huh, that there's going to be some false prophets huh, that's going to try to uh, uh, take God's word huh, and they're going to try to twist that word huh, to, con uh, 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 to cover the things that they're doing. Huh. They're going to try to uh, 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 cover and, and try to, 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 to try to manipulate people huh, and, and God, ha, shando roboko sa, sent to Apostle Paul, ha, rosha bababa si ando roboko sa, to let Timothy know that he must be obedient and he must listen, ha, he must follow the instructions. And one thing we must learn, ladies and gentlemen, when God is giving you instructions, ha, you must follow it. When God is in something, when God is trying to do something, when God God is producing something. You must be obedient. And, and, and Timothy was letting him know you are going to pastor. You're going to uh, direct the 
people. You're going to lead the people. But I need you to be equipped. I need you to take the teachings that I've given you. And I need you to apply them to your life. God is saying apply the teachings to your life today. God is saying, my God from Zion, take heed to my word. Read your word so you can understand the instructions. Read your word huh, so you'll know huh, when false prophets come in the door huh, and they try to take God's word huh, and they try to twist it and manipulate the people. Huh. God wants you to be educated. Huh. God wants you to be understanding in his word. God wants you to lean on him, my God, from Zion. I want you to take the time. To read, my God, 2 Timothy, the first chapter. I was not able to get through it all. But I just want you to understand one thing that God has an assignment for you. Mm -hmm. Each and every one of you have an assignment. God has called you to do something. Don't let this opportunity fly by. Don't let this opportunity walk away from you. He's calling you. God is calling you. For, oh my God. I, I just feel a heaviness being broken. I feel a heaviness being broken off of God's people. Go on and let God do his work in you. Allow God to release you from anything that's not like him. Your job is to do the will of God. If you will say this with me, God, you have full access over my life. Everything in my life, everything around me, you have full access to my mind, my body, my spirit, and my soul. God. I'm giving you my will to control. So you have to understand when you say I am giving you my will to control. That means God is about to take full control of your life. Are you ready? Oh, glory to God. I'm handing over my will for God's will to be done inside of me. Lord, not my will, but your will shall be done in my life. If you said those things with me, I'm telling you, if you begin to say the decree and the declare, Opportunity to take over. I want you to sit back and relax because God is about to move in your life. Father, we thank you right now for moving in my brother and my sister's life right now. Take full control, take full reign in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless everyone. Thank you so much for joining me, and may heaven smile. For more information on today's Spotlight Church, visit them on the internet and follow them on social media. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network. And until next time, remember, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us.